who's up for a fun estate sale haul. It's been a while. This was not my typical estate sale, but I had so much fun and I wanna take you along with me. Friends, welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori and today I am taking a quick turn from what I had planned on putting out for my content for my Wednesday release today. Um, I have a sponsored video and they are having some issues with their site so I am putting off that video for a bit and I am bringing to you today a super fun estate sale haul that I did over the course of two days. I went shopping uh, last Friday and Saturday. It was right here in my hometown. It was in the barn of a couple who had sold at a local antique fair here in Western Massachusetts um, for years. So there were just so many interesting things at every turn that I took. I, of course, stuck to clothing. Also, I haven't really been paying any attention to my website lately. So I'm thinking that instead of doing an Etsy page, I might start trickling over some of my vintage pieces over on my website. It's really still a work in progress. I feel like it will be for a very long time, but that's something I'm thinking of doing. Let me know in the comments what you think and um, you can enjoy a little bit of thrift with me. The first day I went by myself, the second day I went back with my husband, my daughter, and a couple of her friends. If you like reseller content and you enjoy hauls and thrift with me's, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the thumbs up button at any point in this video. Uh, and feel free to ask me questions. I really try to stay on top of my comments. All right, good to go now. America runs on Duncan's. Okay, as you can see at a quick glance here, there is no lacking of stuff at this place. It is just packed. There are tons of rooms, tons of unexpected spaces here. I, I think if you were into gardening, crafting, there would be so much to look through. This was a room in the back that just kind of had a real bowling alley feel to it. Um, but nothing I really had the patience to look through. These were some vintage hats that I thought were pretty cool, but not my aesthetic. Um, let me know if you think it was a bad idea to leave those behind. They were $5 each. When I went back on the second day, they were all available still, or most of them were, which led me to believe that they probably weren't anything of huge value, but I could be wrong. Lots of glassware and china, there's stuff on the floors. Apparently, the people who ran the estate sale moved everything from the house to this barn that was kind of in the back area. I don't know if it's quite a barn. It was just a totally different dwelling, a different building. Um, again, all these little knickknacks. Very interesting to walk through, just not my thing. And as I'm filming all of this, I am, of course, carrying clothes in my arms that I hit that I picked up right outside right away. This was an upstairs, and I wish I got a better view of this room because it was huge. I kind of go close in right away, but this room had so much to offer. And this is where I found one of my best pieces on day two with my daughter's friend, Eddie. But I'm kind of going through here. This is also where I found some linens. I had that blanket. I couldn't tell if it was a tapestry or a blanket or whatever, but I put it down and then when I was checking out, someone else was buying it. So then I always get FOMA when that happens and I thought, thought oh man, should I have grabbed that and purchased it? I think this would have been like a hard good person's dream. So this basket was filled with 90s shoes and I'm sure some of them, like if these had been Steve Madden, maybe I would have picked them up. But those are just a cheaper brand. Um, there were a pair of Tevas in there. Probably should have grabbed those, but like I said, my hands were full. Picked up a silk scarf here. This was all baby's clothing. 
nothing I was really looking for, although I did pick up that little Polly Flitters right there. That was cute. Stuff everywhere. I don't know what I'm still looking at here. I thought that this old Gap bag was pretty cool. There were no clo there was no clothing in there, but I thought the bag was cool. What year do you think that was from with the drawstring top? There's furniture everywhere. My husband's been on the hunt for a hutch that closes because he wants to make like a enclosed tiki bar. There was no rhyme or reason to anything except that none of the clothes were modern. So this is definitely going to be more of a vintage thrift. I picked up like four single stitch t-shirts, um, some wacky stuff as I always pick up wacky stuff and I'm sure I missed a lot of good stuff. It's tomorrow as well and there were so many bags that weren't even open yet that I think I'm going to go back tomorrow after the party is behind me and I can just take a deep breath and just really enjoy myself and hopefully get some great sales. And I feel like with estate sales you go early like this just opened an hour ago. When you go the first day you're getting a lot of the top layer stuff but you miss so much and I think day two the prices drop and you're under the layers. So it's almost like a completely different experience if you go back a second time. So I definitely want to go back tomorrow. And yeah, that's all. That was really fun. So day two I was a lot more relaxed. I had my hands free for most of the time because I loaded up on a lot of the clothes day one. That ceramic Christmas tree unfortunately had a crack or a break at the top, although I would not want to ship that. This was like a little kid area. And then I had that Mother Goose book when I was little. Got a little nostalgic looking at that. More stuff, just what we need. Back here there were no clothes. So I did not spend much time. I ended up going back outside to see the girls. You guys found some cute stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. I knew they'd love like all the vintage stuff, you know, like dish towel sort of things. I am gonna grab the George Michael sweatshirt. Okay, so let's jump right into the video. I just want to start by saying I don't typically source for vintage specifically, but I was so excited to be at this estate sale. And I do like to take advantage of trying out new things for my closet, for my eBay store, and for my website when it is a low buy-in cost. So at this place, all of the clothing was just $1. And I think I got one piece that will pay for everything and then some. So it was a lot of digging. You can see through the footage. This was such a hodgepodge and I wish so much that I knew anything about hard goods because I feel like this would have been a complete treasure trove for some really, really fun hard good purchases. And in fact, when I was checking out, one thing that I did recognize behind the register was somebody had piles of stuff. I got there about 15 minutes after the sale opened and this guy must have been right on top of his game. He had one of those 1970s ceramic Christmas trees that has the lights on them, which they are reproducing a lot of these days, but those originals from the 60s and 70s are worth a lot of money and that guy scooped it up. And I did see one later in my walk through the house, but it was chipped. But anyways, if you are a hard goods person, feel free to leave a comment and tell me what I may have missed. Um, and if you are a vintage clothing person, I don't know, let me know what you think of my pickups. Um, I will share with you my rationale for why I picked up things as I often do, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get into it. The first thing I got isn't super vintage, but it's something that is actually very relevant today and something I wore all the time, and that is a champion sweatshirt. Big deal, right? It doesn't even have the C on it. It has the C um, here, where is it? But when I pick up champions, the thing that I always look for is on the tag is the reverse weave. The reverse weave champion sweatshirts are like the really um, heavy duty ones. 
And these are the ones that kind of last forever. These are the champion sweatshirts that I bought when I graduated from high school, oh, you know, back in 1991, that are still awesome today. So this is probably 25, 30 years old. It's just a plain one. I picked that up. I did pick up this Victoria's Secret gold label um, nightgown, which is really beautiful. This, I believe, is silk. Um, this was when Victoria's Secret was very much something special. It was a very special brand back in the 80s and the 90s. Yes, this is 100% silk, and I love this color. This is a size large, and I always pick up Victoria's Secret gold label. Um, when it's in good condition and yeah, I have pretty good luck with this. So I'll probably list this for 35 or $40 and see how I do. This already has been washed. A lot of these were washed, but then I had like a separate batch for my second day. I didn't even bring this stuff in the house because I had so many other things to haul that I did, left these in my trunk until just now. This I picked up on the second day and I wanted the first day I was wishy-washy about it and then I regret it so that's when you know you should, for a dollar I should have picked it up anyways it's just a George Michael Faith sweatshirt I loved this tour so much I loved George Michael so much and Faith is like such a great song so I haven't even looked up comps on this um, it's a smaller sweatshirt otherwise I would totally keep it because it is my favorite color um, but anyways I was excited about that I really don't know where that's going to land as far as what I'm going to price it at these I have not comped, but by the time I print, by the time I post this video, I will definitely look at the comps on these. These are just pillowcases and they, I'm assuming they are silk. The price tag on one pillowcase is $70. And I loved that there was a set of them. Two were still in the package and two were out. And I wasn't really sure when I first saw these if they were placemats or what, but then I noticed the zipper which I got really excited about because you can just pop in any square um, filler pillow and you have these beautiful embroidered silk pillowcases and these are just gorgeous. I was charged $1 for each of these. So I did get four. So these two are identical, are they? A little, yeah, a little bit different. The, the trim is a little bit darker. And then I have one more with that pattern with the birds and the leaves, so beautiful. And then I have this one that is pretty unique. I was hoping I could find a second one. The plastic on it is a little um, shiny. I apologize, but these are just gorgeous. I can't wait to run the comps on these. Moving on, this I think was a bit of a fail. I saw it and I was like, oh, that's pretty bohemian. I like the neck. There's like little tassels here. So I got it home and I washed it. It looks like, um, Made in India, 100% cotton. I think this was, you know, probably maybe even purchased in India. Who knows? But when I got it home and I washed it and um, it's gathered at the bottom, uh, it kind of looks like a graduation gown to me. There's like really nothing special about this. Maybe I'll wear this and try to like glitz it up with like jewelry or like a pop of color somewhere. Um, it looks like a one size sort of a thing. But anyways, I don't know. I got excited because it kind of felt bohemian to me, but that's not gonna photograph very well. Um, this is probably my score of the weekend, and I was with Eddie, you saw Eddie in the video. But this we pulled out, I think Eddie found this. I'm telling you that kid is a good luck charm for me. The lighting is super weird right now. Um, anyways, we got a Dolce Gabbana wool, um, jacket it's like short and sleeves here so I don't I don't know if, what is the intention with this um, but there's no what I couldn't believe at this place is I got quite a few wool pieces or no um, moth holes did I speak too soon yeah this is the beginning of one so definitely this wool isn't in the best shape but honestly I have to look up comps but if I could get $50 that would pay for all of this stuff um, oh, this is what was interesting. I totally forgot. Okay, if you're a local person, we had the store Filene's Basement for years in downtown Boston, and it was like a staple store. So this was from Filene's. This is new with tag. That's what it was. The price tag on this is um, $199, and it's from Filene's Basement, and they were notorious for getting they would get these great high-end designer brands, which is how I pretty much authenticated this, is because it had the Filene's Basement tag on it. And they would do these big wedding sample sales and 
people would line up. It was like a really big deal to go to Filene's basement. It was it was like the original bins, I would say, in my world where I, we would go and there were just clothes everywhere and it was kind of a mess, but there were so many gems in there and they had great pricing. So yeah, that's where this came from. So I don't know. The one thing that's missing here are the buttons. So I definitely, want, I was hoping I'd find buttons while I was shopping there, um, but I wasn't that on my game. But I wanna find some fun vintage buttons and put on here. And I don't know if the real real would accept this um, with you know buttons that I put on um, or if I should try to sell it on my own or whatever. But I was most excited for this piece. This was like the best piece of the batch. So thank you again to Eddie. He always finds great pieces. This is just the gap, but it's a medium um, rayon and cotton blend. Just a really fun, it was a good size. I mean, usually vintage seems to run on the smaller size, but this is the opposite. I feel like this runs a little bit big and the elastic is going a little bit, but it's just this kind of like nice flowy boho style skirt. Um, I picked up one baby outfit. It was a Polly Flinders, um, just because this is a size three toddler, just like a classic. This would be something I put up on eBay, just like a cute little classic dress with the buttons in the back, really cute for the holidays. If that were more like a spring dress, like an Easter dress, I probably wouldn't have picked it up, but because we have Christmas coming, I'll grab that. I grabbed that. This I love. This was a, is a vintage Gap sweatshirt, 100% um, cotton, um, made in Hong Kong. So look at this, it's got the mock neck, really great. I love the Gap. Um, and I was happy this was cotton, because I, although this is freaking whole. Damn it, damn it. I could probably sew this actually. Oh my gosh, between this and all of the stuff that I got from um, Zara, I just am not up for all these repairs. Although this, I think I could probably stitch up pretty quick, but oh, I'm sad about this. I love this sweater. All right, well, there's that. I'm not sure why I picked this. I think because it was Honolulu. I found this interesting. Um, Malia, Honolulu, I, these people must have traveled. They had stuff from all over the place. And I love this evergreen color, um, which is probably getting old. I feel like I say that in every video. Um, but this is just a nice classic blazer. I thought this was worth looking into. You know how I love to research stuff? If it's a dollar, I feel like I, I can learn a lot about a brand for one dollar to come home. And I will obviously make my money back. Same with this. This was made in Belgium and it was a wool blend, wool and rayon. So if you know this, brand. I probably should have researched before. I like to research before I do my videos so that I can share stuff, but another blazer. Um, and I thought this was kind of cool because it had this really thin belt. I thought that was cool. Very, very light shoulder pads, but I thought this was nice and neutral. And I don't want to speak too soon on this one, but for a wool blend, I didn't see any damage on this. And I thought this was kind of a timeless blazer that would look really nice once it's all steamed up. This piece is really fun. Okay, what have we have? I may have to stand up for this one. Um, this is China Seas, one size fits all, genuine batik, made in Indonesia, 100% cotton. All right, this is super cool. See, I could picture this at Anthropology for like $130, so I'm gonna stand. So it is a dress, it's got this empire waist with a belt, and it is maxi length. So it's got these beautiful flowers on it. It has a split, a slit up the side and just super, super cool. I love the sleeves. They split right here. Um, I think this is pretty awesome. I was really so excited about this piece. I scooped it up. Yeah, they have a real international flair for all the clothes that they offered. This is a beautiful, I believe this is Angora uh, lamb's wool. 40% lamb's wool and then 40% angora rabbit, rabbit hair made in Hong Kong. Again, if it's made in Hong Kong, that's always a sign that it's vintage. Not that I needed that to tell me this was vintage. This is almost like an ice blue and the brand is just Choss, which is not a brand I typically pick up, but this was so pretty. Um, the color's not really showing up. It is like an ice blue and I love the crossover in the front and the, the four gold buttons at the bottom, just really pretty. What I look for also when I shop for vintage clothing is just, you know, how can this be worn today in 2020? Is this something that could be relevant today? Is this something that I 
would see at an anthropology or a specialty shop that would make it current right now? What pieces can I put with this to make it look good now? So I always have that running in the back of my mind. And then there are pieces like this. Bean is just north of us here in Massachusetts and L.L. Bean is like a staple brand in this area. And some of the L.L. Bean pieces I have go for a lot. This is 100% pure wool, size large, definitely one of their older tags. And this is just a very classic um, sweater. This was definitely shrunk. I mean, unless this is just vintage large, but um, again, I keep waiting to see giant holes. I think it's ironic that the hole was actually on the cotton sweater and not the wool sweaters. I have really good luck selling L.L. Bean. I'm sorry, my pile is building up here. Um, I love to sell L.L. Bean. Okay, this is super random. I love random. Um, okay, this looks extremely old and this is where I, I wish I knew more about vintage. Um, Coochie is the brand, K-O-O-C-H-E-E, -C -C -E -E, Coochie. And this is literally a one piece. Um, there's ruffles here. There's ruffles. This is, I would guess, 100% cotton. There is some staining on this, but look, this is like a one piece with bloomers at the bottom. I don't even want to open this because I can, I can, you can hear the, the elastic is ready to go on this. Um, so I'm not going to touch this. This could be something very special and I, I wasn't sure, but for $1, you bet I am going to research the heck out of this. These are the rabbit holes I go down though and like days will go by and I won't list anything, but I'll, I'll tell you everything about Gucci <laughs> and more. Um, but anyways, how cool is this? I'll stand up. We'll get the full effect. I mean, this reminds me of something. Okay, there's, there's one of the stains right there. Um, I don't even know how I would approach cleaning this. I might just steam it, but it definitely has like that little mildew. 100% cotton made in India, hand wash in cold water. But I mean, look at even all the lace trim here. I don't know, I love old pieces like this. So cool, no idea what I can price that for or who, now that's something, I don't know how relevant that would be today, but maybe like for costuming or things like that, somebody would be excited about that. Um, I picked this up, I don't know why, cause I'm weird. I thought this fabric was really cool. This is just straight up fabric. Maybe Angie could bring it to college or something. I just like the pattern on this. Um, they had so much fabric. They had vintage books. They had so much stuff. Um, what's this? Oh, I just remember like being in the 80s, um, Varnay. These sunglasses when I was a kid, like Varnay France. Does anybody else remember this? I feel like they would always have like these knockoff teacher t-shirts at Old Orchard Beach when we would go, but this was actual, but they would do these in knockoff form when I was a kid, where I went. I didn't get any of the real stuff, but this is just a vintage single stitch tee. So there were a bunch of t-shirts that were all single stitch, all like from like touristy destinations. So I grabbed a bunch of them. So I might as well share them with you now. And then Angie did go back on the second day and I have the stuff she chose. And all I can say is I'm so out of it because I would not have picked up anything she picked because I passed it all the first day. And then she went back and grabbed it. All right, I have this Paris t-shirt, Paris, France. Um, and again, this is the single stitch here, just a black t-shirt, pretty cool. I think I'll price my t-shirts around the 30, $35 mark. And I always take offers um, this, this Hawaii tee the gecko on the back, art gecko. I'm sure these are from the 80s because I remember all this stuff. This shirt I'm kind of psyched about. It is single stitch, but it's Harvard University and it's a pretty cool t-shirt. I thought at first it was champion, but it's soft tee and it's just Harvard athletics. I got this belt, kind of cool. Not sure about this. As you saw in the footage, you know, I'm just rolling there. I'm just like grabbing stuff and having a great old time. I'm gonna grab some of the stuff that Angie picked up. I'm going to share with you what Angie got and then I have just a couple more random pieces to share with you and then the video will be over. If you're having fun, feel free to give this a thumbs up and comment below what your favorite piece is so far. And let me know how you do with vintage. I'm always trying vintage. I'm very interested in vintage. I'm just not super good at it, but I know what I like and I like to trust my gut. Okay, so first thing Angelina bought, 
This random hand-painted sweatshirt has a lot of staining around the color, jersey, totally, totally something. My mamere, Jeanette Roberts, God bless her and rest her soul. She died at 98 and this is exactly what my meme would wear all the time. We used to buy her, she used to have little birthmarks on her necks that she called sitsins. Um, so she was very self-conscious about her sitsins on her neck. And so we would always have to buy her like high neck sweatshirts. She was the cutest person ever. Um, and that is exactly something she would wear. Angelina also bought these random red sweatpants. She got this purple corduroy skirt. Um, looks like a little discoloration here. Um, Jessica Scott, 100% cotton, made in Japan. That I can actually see being cute, but it looks like some discoloration on there. She doesn't seem to mind that stuff. This I thought was cute. This was a good pickup. Oh, and it's Wrangler, even cuter. So this is a really old, cute Wrangler, um, little yellow cotton zip up jacket. Is it zip? Yeah. I mean, this is old, old stuff. Unbelievable. I love it. And she got these little grandma shorts as well. What is with these? These are all discolored, unless it's the lighting here. I forgot to show you this. So Angie wanted like, she wants to do a lot of hanging plants in her dorm room. And so I got this at the sale and I just forgot to share it. It's this, you know, definitely vintage, I would say 70s or 80s. What I can't figure out is if this basket here is supposed to kind of almost look like a chair and you can put little things in here or you can kind of lay it flat, but whichever. I thought it was really cute and Ange was super excited about it. So she is gonna take that with her to school. That was five bucks. I actually had a few more articles of clothing, more um, tourist t-shirts, single stitch. This is a London t-shirt, which I think is really cute. I'm always looking for fun vintage t-shirts. And I picked this up. This is just a Vermont sweatshirt and it has owls on it. I think I might crop this before I sell it because it looked like there was a little staining down here. So I just might crop this. It feels super comfortable. It is just a Hanes extra large, made in the USA, really cute. I feel like animals sell. Anytime I see something with animals on it, I think it's kind of fun. I got two scarves, which I thought were really pretty. This one is definitely silk. I have so many scarves that I need to list. I don't even know why I pick them up anymore because I never list them. Zuzu Lux, this one had was new with tags. So this probably isn't vintage, but I thought this was really pretty and it was new with tag. That's like a nice thing to bundle in an order. Okay, and now I wanna talk a little bit about this book. I paid $5 for this book, which once I got to the to the checkout, I was like, ah, I'm not really big into books, but I definitely want to research this. It says Walking with Nature, and it is a leather bound book. And these must be someone's initials. I don't know if it's the owners, but they were like antique dealers. So AMM. And it has all these little inserts inside the book. It's a three ring binder, and it looks like these were all things that were sent. So it has like, you know, the Curious Nature List, 1980 to 81 winter, and then this is spring, and this is summer, 1979. And there are just these wonderful um, illustrations inside with animals from the area. And um, I, I just thought this was kind of fascinating. And my mom is a big nature person. She loves gardening and everything. So I thought at the very least, she might enjoy some of the stuff in here. and. On the, I should open this to show you. These are probably milled and then like, say like once a month or something along those lines. And then somebody created the three hole punch and put it in here. So this is from Waltham, Massachusetts. Waltham's about 30 minutes from where I live. And um, it has this woman's address. So it looked like this was a very well loved binder with all of these wonderful little inserts that someone just put in. And I just think of all the years and time that went into this book and I thought it was kind of interesting. It has stuff about, um, you know, stars, summer life, things like that. Almost would be really fun for a teacher, like a science teacher teaching classes outside. I don't know, this is one of those things I may end up redonating, but just the leather binder alone, I thought was really cool for five bucks and it's got like all these little footprints over it. So that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. 
consider subscribing to my channel. This is an untypical haul for me. I definitely sell mostly modern clothing, um, but I do like to dabble in vintage stuff every once in a while, and I really appreciate that you come along for the ride with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what your favorite flip has been on a vintage piece. I'm just curious to hear. And let me know your thoughts on the Dolce & Gabbana jacket too, what you think I should do with that. I'm excited to dig into that project and start researching all of these things. So I'm gonna go hang out with my computer and research for like the next five hours. No, I'm lying. I have to edit this video and get it up tonight. So I hope you're all doing great. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll be back real soon. Bye.